Hi, I'm Chen Liu. And I'm Sal. And this is Our Next Make. In the hallway of my sister's house, there's an empty area on a long stretch of wall just waiting to be filled with art. My sister asked if we'd be willing to make something unique for this space. We first took measurements of the height and width of the space. Because the area is so large, we measured it like we would the rough opening of a window or a door, and took measurements at three locations. I pulled out my tablet, logged into my 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for Maker's account, and launched a 3D whiteboard session. I took a picture of the wall, placed it on the board, and jotted down the dimensions. As my sister and I exchanged ideas on the pattern and style of the design, I generated comps to give both of us a quick preview of what each design may look like. After exploring leaves and flowers, we settled on trees. So I got some inspiration from online searches, which I also added to the 3D whiteboard. Once we chose the direction, I created the final vector art that I could send to Sal for the CNC. I create a couple of artboards that represent the size of the wall space and the size of a sheet of plywood. With some creative rotations and scaling, the pieces can all fit snugly onto a single sheet. After prepping the tool pass for the build, I threw a sheet of 3 16 burst plywood onto the CNC and got started cutting. The first thing I always do when cutting large sheets like this is run a pass that drills extremely shallow holes in the locations where I'll screw the sheet down to the bed. This ensures that I won't hit a screw and break a bit while cutting. With everything securely held in place, I could let the CNC do its magic. I start by running all of the inner profiles. That way, there's still a ton of material holding the project in place. Before running the outer profiles, I clean up any loose material that's left by the first pass. For me, watching the CNC run a project like this never gets old. It's a remarkable dance that's the last step in our digital design and fabrication process. And seeing all of the intricate pieces nested together to make the best use of material is very satisfying. But now we need to move on to all the hands-on work. The first step is to free the pieces from the sheet. I use my oscillating multi-tool to cut the small tabs that hold the pieces in place. I use quite a few on the larger pieces to make sure that the thin branches and leaves wouldn't break during the machining process. This worked really well and the large pieces stayed intact. Once we returned to my sister's house, we solicited help from the family to do some sanding of the plywood faces and edges. Sal took the opportunity to fill some gaps, holes, and chipped areas with some wood putty. Everyone had a great time sanding and grooving to some tunes. This will be a memory the kids will recall every time they walk by the hallway art. While the wood putty dried, I started practicing with my newest tool, a paint sprayer. I've never used one before, so I filled it with water and sprayed an area on the driveway. Having built some confidence, I moved on to priming the pieces. With all of the intricate details on this project, I'm so glad we bought this tool. It made quick work of covering all the thickness edges of the plywood, something that would have taken well over an hour to do by hand, and would have likely resulted in drips. With the sprayer, I just had to spray from different angles to make sure I covered everything. As expected, the primer raised the grain on the raw plywood. So we hit everything with 300 grit sandpaper and added a bit more wood putty to a few areas we had missed. Then I sprayed on two coats of latex paint. To finish up on the details, I touched up a few areas with a small brush. Then we moved on to installing the pieces. We first dry fit everything and then placed it on the floor in the same orientation it would go up on the wall. Starting with the smallest piece, Sal added a thin bead of construction adhesive to the back. We really tried to make sure the material wouldn't squeeze out or be so thick that it created a gap between the pieces and the wall. With a bit of nervous excitement, I attached the piece to the wall and shot a few 23 gauge pin nails at an angle into the sheetrock. As you can see from the blue painter's tape, I originally thought I'd use 2 inch finish nails to hit studs, but since the construction adhesive is really doing all the work, I just needed a few pin nails to hold the pieces in place while things set up. As the pieces got larger, we were glad we had two sets of hands. I'd hold the leaves away from the wall as Sal shot pins into the branches and worked his way out to the tips. This prevented the adhesive from making a mess on the wall before we positioned everything perfectly. After adding the butterflies, I went back and spot treated the pinheads using a small brush. Now we're ready for the final reveal. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode and that this inspired you to do something special for your family. Whether you take an image like we did and turn it into wall art, or if you apply your creativity in some other way, I'm certain your family's gonna love it. And when you do, definitely tell us about it in the comments. And until then, we'll see you on our next make.